kids, I know you have mom and dad and other people in your lives that, that you have to listen to, namely grandma. But like we always say, grandpa is usually almost always right. <laughs> right, Greg? Yeah. Yeah. And if, if grandma says no, go to grandpa. Right. Right. And, and again, grandpa is usually right. And this week, especially, um, we have the iPad announcements. We have all of the new information and we were mostly right. So you found the right place. This is Gadgets with Family, the tech show where you get two grandpas talking about tech. And this is the day we've been waiting for, for a while now. So I'm excited. Rick, uh, not too not too excited on your end. I, I I did see brief mention of the uh the iPad mini, which is your favorite iPad, but <laughs> No, there there's no, some no really there. there's some really cool stuff in here. So I, I won't right. do that. I think I'd be more excited if I had gone onto the site afterwards with the intent to hit the buy button, but it's just not happening right now. So um but we'll talk about that. So let's jump into it, Greg. Hit the theme music. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. This, again, is Gadgets for Families with a tech show. And for iPad guys, well, Apple guys like us, there's, there's no better day than right after an announcement. Right. We've, we've been getting rumors and rumors and keeping up with with uh, just different insider knowledge and stuff for all these devices that we're happy about. So there's no better day than keynote day or, or Apple announcement day or however you want to call it. Uh, this is usually a good day for us. What about the and, day the devices arrive in our well on our porches? I guess, right. Right. This is that's, that's the only thing that's better is actually getting these devices in our hands. So. A little disappointment on my end, and <clears throat> we'll talk about that here coming up, but um, yeah, so Apple had their announcement, uh, and they showcase the uh, new, the new iPads, or what's in store for the new iPads that, that's, uh, that's going to be releasing here in about a week. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, so thank you for everyone that's just joining the show. Uh, if you just stumbled upon us just because you're looking for iPad news or Apple news, thanks for joining us. Uh, we do do this every week. Thanks to everyone that's been joining us on this journey every week. We really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, and share button. You know, do all those things that that uh, YouTubers ask you to do every week. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who's been doing that. And uh, if you're new, welcome. Welcome aboard, and uh, yeah, yeah, we'll jump into it. I do have a quick note from last week's post show. Uh, someone reached out to me directly with, uh, so last week on the post show, we talked about our top uh, episode picks for Star Trek The Next Generation. Greg gave his top three, and I gave my top three, and I mentioned one of my top three was Yesterday's Enterprise. So the note I got was, so yesterday's Enterprise needs a fandom extension where they can show what happened when they returned to the past to gallantly die in uh, uh, preventing the war. So since Tasha was added to the crew after losing the captain and, um, and determined that her death had, was to have some meaning to it, uh, the episode could be called uh, Yar's Revenge, like that old Atari game, remember? Yeah. Yeah, Yard's Revenge. <laughs> so really cool little comment. Uh, uh, thanks for who, who shared that with us. Uh, they mentioned they thought about that all by themselves. Uh, they didn't. They stole that name. <laughs> Just an episode or should they spin off a series based on that particular enterprise, right? I definitely could watch a whole series, a whole uh, a, a whole uh, season of just that episode, watching what happened to them when they went back to the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, really, really good idea. And and again, I knew that it was always one of my favorite episodes, but didn't realize that everyone loved that episode. You know what I mean? I thought people went for the the obvious uh, popular episodes like um, um, 
what was it best of, best both, of worlds both worlds and things like that yeah and connor at far point and stuff like that i knew i knew those were always favorites but yesterday's enterprise really stood out to me so uh again thanks to the other person who shared that with me um that's it let's not drag this thing out any longer let's well, just let, jump let into me explain it. so for everybody that is watching you'll see i'm not in my normal right, right, recording right. Lo location i think we've done a couple of episodes from the trailer mm -hmm. um but not when we were emphasizing video for sure um a matter of fact i don't even know if we've done a video episode from the trailer probably just the podcast because it's been a while no. but um yep. we did one outside right when i was camping over thanksgiving and but i was outside so yep i'm in my camp trailer i have no idea what the audio is going to sound like it's not my final setup this is a makeshift setup so uh yeah yeah if i was in my house all you would hear would be echo 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 <laughs> right because there is nothing left in my house i told jay i was watching the the event in the living room that only has the tv the entertainment center and the couch i was sitting on so there's just nothing left in my house so but it was still exciting right. i took a picture i'll probably use it for the video thumbnail the picture i took of the screen just as they were transitioning from the nice grainy arty stuff into the actual apple park that i thought that transition was was really pretty cool so i got a picture of that and that's probably what i'll use for our right. thumbnail so okay well greg mentioned we we started talking about the macbook air right and and that's the laptop that i recommend to everyone even the older version Right, we still recommend the M1 uh, uh, MacBook Air because it was on deep, deep discount from was it Best Buy or Walmart a few months back, or a few weeks back. Walmart's got that. Is it the M1? Right, whichever right. one, right? Walmart's got it at like three ninety nine or six ninety nine, yeah. whatever yeah. the crazy low price that Apple's never had before. It was cheaper than the uh, cheaper than the entry level. Um, um, iPad Pro, so you can get a powerful full laptop yeah. for a really good deal. I don't remember what the price was, but you know, like we still ran and rave about these older versions of the MacBook Air, and the uh, the latest version of it, like like we mentioned earlier, friend of the show Tim Cook mentioned that it's the best selling laptop ever. So not just the best selling MacBook or MacBook Air. I mean, it's a laptop, so better than Lenovo, better than uh hp better than you know all these other competitors the macbook air is is outselling anyone and that's a 13 and 15 inch uh model which is awesome right yeah I, it seems like now and um, we'll talk about this in a second but it seems like now they're trying to do those two size options right so that mm -hmm. they can um so that they can accommodate those that want the ultra portable or those that are potentially using this as their primary computer, or maybe their only computer. Right. So that goes for iPads, that goes for phones, that goes for Macs as well, right? That you have right. a size choice so that you can determine, okay, yeah, I need the extra space, so I'm going to take it. This is my only computer. I'm going to do everything known to man on it, and it's not necessarily going to go in a backpack all the time with me. Right. So I'm going to get the 15-inch version. And and everything, like you said, it's their main driver. So not just for, you know, productivity, but entertainment, right? You want to watch movies. You want the biggest screen that you can carry with you. And 15 inches yeah. seems like a, a a good sweet spot for, you know, a portable monitor or something like that. So, um, yeah. That's what we yeah, said. If you're, and, if you're sending somebody off to college, and I think that stands true, people are graduating from high school, getting ready to go to college, off yep. to trade school. They're going to take a laptop with them and they're going to be in a small apartment or a dorm or whatever the case may be. A 15 inch MacBook, if it's going to be their only device or money towards one is, is a really, really good idea. I know when I went to college, I just took all the money I got for graduation and walked into the bookstore the first week and got the education discount and uh, got my Mac. Mm -hmm. So, but that 15 inch MacBook air would be a really good choice because Yes, you can haul it to class. That won't be a problem. Um, but if it's going to be your only screen, it's going to be your TV, it's going to be your everything, then yeah. go with that 15. So, yeah. yeah. So that was the MacBook Air news. Greg, 
we kind of had a feeling that we were going to hear something about the Vision Pro, but I kind of I really wasn't expecting any big news. Definitely any software updates or things like that. Not with WWDC being right around the corner, but we did get some news. What do we got? Yeah, I mean it's it's mostly they were just talking about the way people are using it and it makes sense right. because the all of the hype and stuff has kind of died down right so there's not this big we've sold more units than we expected i don't think they even wanted to tell anybody how many they expected to sell yeah. but you know they used big names like porsche and right. you see a customer in a dealership walking around a porsche with the vision pro on with a salesperson on the other side with a ipad yeah watching them go through this experience um then they talked about a surgeon um, we've heard about that a couple of times. There's already been some surgeries done with the Vision Pro and just mm -hmm. because of the low latency, which is kind of important if you're putting sharp instruments inside a person. I would think and, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like I mentioned earlier, the whole concept of doing the overseeing the video editing from a Vision Pro. Now, they were careful not to say that he was actually doing the editing, but that he was overseeing, overseeing it. Right. The editing. So I'm not quite sure what that means, but just the idea that there are these uh, enterprise or professional or creative uses for this, I think is great. Um, I think that lends credence to the fact that a lot of people have talked about the fact that they're, yes, they're watching movies, they're consuming content on it, but they've really kind of stopped using it as a daily work mm -hmm. driver, which between that and then the announcements that we had today, you know, I sell my house. I'm going to make a tech purchase. Mm -hmm. Question is, where am I going? Right? Am I am I going right. to go with the Vision Pro, or am I going to dive into one of these new iPads that we talked about? So, yeah, yeah, that was it. I was glad they mentioned it. I think they'll keep the hype. I really think, um, and I don't want to spoil anything for the iPad section, but I really think WWDC is important this year. I think um, so too. For the Mac, I think it's the AI stuff is going to be super, super important. I think probably the same thing for the iPhone. You know, are they going to make their uh, assistant Siri smarter, right? Are they going mm -hmm. to be able to do that kind of stuff for the phone, I think is important. But when it comes to the iPad and it comes to Vision OS, I think it's all about the platform and all about yep. the software. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So back to that editing thing. So I, I know like we've seen behind the scenes and we've seen the editing process for major motion pictures for years. And they always use beautiful displays or multi displays and stuff when they're working with the editors. But they're always in the office at a desk or, you know, maybe in like a, a conference room or something like that. Uh, and then once it's edited, then they test it on the basically the theater experience. Right. Right. Uh, once they get a, a cut before they get to their final, you know, that final cut that they have, um, this allows him to be able to, you know, experience that theater experience through the whole editing process. So I think this is a big deal for that entire industry of, of editing movies or, or videos and stuff like that. You know, well, you, you can every step of the way uh, make every decision based on the theater experience and not just, you know, what what looks good on the uh on the screen so and depending on how good final cut shows up when you uh you know when you're viewing your mac display in the vision pro because mm -hmm. that's the other thing they could be doing they could have a mac pro sitting on a desk that we didn't see and right, he could right. have his mac display up and um or a studio imac those are powerful enough too but um anyway he could have a mac display up on this giant screen and actually be seeing the editing mm -hmm. right so or doing some of the editing so i think those are options i'd love to know more about that i'm yeah. definitely interested in that movie because i'm a fan of the musical so um i'll be curious to see but yeah you're right just that ability to easily transition from editing to what the customer or the end consumer is going to see or mm -hmm. even like i was saying to to put the editing tools up on the vision pro um, I know Brandon Butch, when he first got his Vision Pro, that some of what he was doing was doing some of his editing and stuff like that on the Vision Pro. So. Okay, well, let's jump into this iPad. So we'll start with that entry-level iPad. Now, well, do we want to talk about generic stuff first, like surprises, disappointments, or do we want to go through the stuff first? Um, 
No, let's talk about our surprises. Well, because I don't want to spoil anything because one of the big surprises for me was uh, was a big feature. So let's just point them out then as we go along. Okay. All right. Let's do That'll that. That'll work. So one of the disappointments for me, and I believe you text me and I text you at the same time. I was just thinking at the same time was the, the color options on the uh, entry level iPad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I believe you said something to the effect of they really need to hire someone else to pick colors. <laughs> These colors are, they're pretty boring. They're, they're pretty boring. I, I, I think. Except yeah, we're for talking maybe about the iPad Air now, right? Right, right. The the, the entry level iPad Air, and yeah. if I'm not mistaken, no, these colors are are lighter. Yeah, right. Just just like just like they did on the uh, on the the last iPhone, uh, 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 the the 15. For some reason, they they're straying away from these bold colors, right? Yeah. You mentioned like you love that that forest green, mm -hmm. and the green that they went with was more of a subtle kind of. So they they're doing the same thing on the Air. Uh, I don't like it. I, I do like the more solid, bolder colors. Even though all of, I'm not a fan of all of the colors, I, I did expect like a really bold yellow, right? A really good looking blue. And Something. Yeah, we just didn't get that. So, well, I mean, we've talked about them being pastel or Easter colors, right? But I don't right. even think this blue. And so it comes in blue, purple, starlight, and space gray. Whatever version of space gray they're putting on right. this, right? I don't even think I'd put the blue or purple on an Easter egg. You wouldn't right. be able to find right. it. Yeah. Yeah. It it just wouldn't stand out. And, you know, talking about purple, which is, you know, my company colors and, and everything, the purple on the iPhone 14 looked really good. R remember, that was that was my first choice was that purple. Just, you know, having it at, in my uniform and the company colors and everything. I, I thought it was just going to be an excellent choice. The purple on the 15 and now the iPad Air is really disappointing. Yeah. Barely even a purple. So that was that's one thing, you know, but no big deal because what's what matters the most is what's inside, right? To some people. <laughs> yeah. So, but I have one so just kind of going through my notes on this. So, I I love that they were showing people using the iPad Air or just using the iPad in general. I just want to mm -hmm. ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Multiple times they did this. If you were at a construction site, would you be using an iPad without a case? Absolutely not. <laughs> no screen protector, no case, anything. He was really And remember, Apple is is no longer Apple cares. They just like yeah. you a lot. So, that that's a really bold move to <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw that and I'm like I know why they do it right because they want to show it off and yeah they have to show it all the that, it's the marketing thing of this but I'm sitting there going no way yeah <laughs> that thing wouldn't even last a day it would be unusable within the first two hours at a full-blown yeah. construction yeah. site. so I just that was my I thought that was kind of funny yeah yeah so let's go through it here because you took way more detailed notes than I did of course but uh <laughs> Well, how about so I lead got through two... this one, and how about you take the iPad Pro, since I know that's your baby? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, let's do that. So iPad Air comes in two sizes, so I think this is great, right? Like right. we were just talking about with the MacBooks, now you have the Air and the iPad Pro in two different sizes, and they're getting away from all of the points and points and points and points, so they're just calling them an 11-inch and yep. a 13-inch iPad Air. Liquid Retina display, which honestly, I don't know what the iPad had before, but it's got fantastic display. Moved the camera, right? Landscape which we've been, camera now. We've like been expecting. With the 10th gen or whichever one it was that was the weird one. It right. like they were piloting this to see how it would work. Although I will have to look on this one because I know on that one, they did not rotate the Apple logo. So the Apple logo was still portrait, but the camera and everybody uses it in landscape. So we'll have to see if they did that on this one. By the way, we didn't mention that. This is our hot takes, everybody. Literally, right. the event has to. been over. We're 20 minutes into recording and the event's been over for an hour. So right. these are hot takes. Next week, we'll talk more in depth about what we find out. And then the next week after that, will probably be all iPad too. So just get used to all iPad for the for the next three weeks here, but these are hot yeah. takes. So there's a lot of stuff we don't know. And anyway. Yeah. And like we always say, there's always more information that comes out. 
right? There, there's people will do a deeper dive into it. Other people will do a deeper dive into it. And Apple is known for um, kind of underselling and, and over delivering on these things. So there's probably some, some really good features, some really uh, standout features that they just didn't mention. Uh, center stage is now available on the air, which, you know, we could use, but some people do. Um, I don't use it on like when we're doing this stuff, I might, if I had a ton of video calls, I was on an hour and 15 minute video call, uh, yesterday with a client. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the longest video call I've been on in forever. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, center stage landscape stereo speakers with spatial audio now on the air and improved sound. They talked about bass improvements, which I really enjoy. So that's really cool. Um, I wrote boring next to yep. the colors because they Womp are um, M2 processor. Great. Yep. If yeah, there's really going to be any software that could actually take advantage of it. Now, one of the reasons I think they're doing this, even if there's not software that can push the processor to its maximum, I think one of the reasons they're doing this, and we can talk about this more in the iPad Pro because they gave specs, but there's mm-hmm. the efficiency gains that they're getting with every new generation of their chip. So you're talking about a device that actually got thinner, right? And mm-hmm. so the more efficient they are, the less battery they have to put in there, which means less volume and less weight. And that's a good thing. Uh, less battery is, or more battery is never, never a bad thing, right? Right. So, except for weight, except for it makes it yeah. heavier. But in this case, it's not very, it's not much heavier. Here's the problem. We can, we'll talk about this later about the actual sizes, but I, 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 thin devices, thin devices in my big hands are yep. not they, good. They feel feel like paper. Yep. Like if I take my mini even out of its case, I'm like, this feels really cool, but I'm going to break it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have iPhone 7 plus problems where I'm going to stick it in my pocket and pull it out and it's going to be in a V shape, right? Yeah. Because, but that's what it feels like. But anyway, so yeah, so efficiency and that kind of stuff there. Of course, they mentioned all the cool things with AI, but they were really clear in talking about all the things with AI that they've been doing, right? The right the photo stuff, the creative stuff, all that kind of stuff. Uh, It works with the magic keyboard with the floating design. I think the old air Mm -hmm. didn't, I think it only worked with the, the older model. So this is the one with the cantilever, Uh, the Apple pencil. It can, sorry. Well, I was going to say, I think because the iPad air is basically the current generation. Well, the previous generation now, but the, the current one available now, of the iPad Pro, which is the M2 iPad Pro, the one that I traded way too early, <laughs> way, way too early. And uh, more on that in my disappointment section. But um, so this is basically it. So I believe that this iPad Air works with this current generation of, uh, Magic, of keyboard. Uh, Magic Keyboard. So if you're able to find one uh, for a reasonable deal, one that's in really good condition, I'm selling mine. <laughs> So if you find one in really good condition for a really good price and you're leaning towards this iPad Air, um, yeah, it may be, may be a good find, you yeah. know, maybe a good purchase. Apple Pencil now supports the hover feature. That's where you can just hover it over the screen and then it'll show you where you're going to tap, which right. has been really popular on, under creatives. Uh, faster Wi-Fi. Yep. Um, double the starting storage to a whopping 128 gigabytes. Yeah, uh, I think this was is- a good move. And it's probably fine for most people. Um, but yeah. And then they have added uh, storage options. So terabyte, right. and I think maybe two terabytes too. So the important yeah. thing there is like they did with the screen size is there's giving folks that want more storage space. So let's say I wasn't going to get a pro, but I wanted to always have all of my video library on my iPad. Yep. All right. All of it. Or I only wanted to go into a old back in my day. We had these internet cafes. That's the only place you could go. If I wanted mm-hmm. to go somewhere that had Wi-Fi, because I'm you know out in the boondocks or whatever, and download a whole season off of Amazon Prime or Disney Plus or something like that. Now they're giving you options, so you don't have yeah. to buy the Pro device to be able to store 
your entire library of stuff on on an iPad. So yeah, I think that's this really is good. a good move. I think yeah. this is a good move. I, I think that you know, as a as a society now, you know, sixty sixty uh, you know sixty four gigabytes is just unusable for yeah. for some people. You know, you you talk about half of your music library and a few. Uh, 4K videos that you filmed of the grandkids, or or your you know a graduation or something like that, and you're done. And you already get in pop ups yeah. saying that your your uh the, your phone is no longer or your your iPad is no longer backing up because of your storage. So, 128 I think is a good good move yeah. by Apple. Yeah, I mean I could even put my music library right right. On it. So anyway, so, so that's good. Uh, yeah. And then they left the price the same, so 5.99. For the 11 inch, and now the 7.99 for the 13, so a 200 dollars difference, which kind of makes sense, right? Um, so, uh, then the last note I had on here is that uh, you can order it right now if mm-hmm. you want, and it ships next week. So, womp womp. So I knew when they said that, just like you, I yeah. knew when they said that that the same was in store for the pro. So I text uh, Jason and said, "You'll be waiting. You'll be waiting." Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that turns out that that's the case. So yeah, I, I like this new iPad air. I, I think it, again, when we first started hearing the rumors, like a bigger size of a mid range iPad, not the entry level, which I don't, I don't think they probably won't ever do a 13 inch entry level iPad, but you know, it puts you in that mid range and that iPad air uh, price range. Um, Without all of the power, still powerful because it has that M2 processor, faster Wi-Fi. What was it? Uh, the 6E um, uh, Wi-Fi yeah. standard, and uh, so a really powerful device for a reasonable price. But you get that big screen that I love so much in that that 13 inch. Whereas before, you could only get that by paying the maximum amount for an iPad Pro. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think I think this is going to be popular, just like the MacBook Air. What do you think? Yeah, I do. I I really think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be super popular. And so I was just thinking, you know, because you and I had talked about, am I going pro? Because am I really gonna use the pro features with this MacBook that I have, Mm -hmm. or would I just go with the Air? Well, they did enough in the Pro that I really don't want to go Air if I don't have to. Right. So, um, but the question then is if you wanted to go with this, so if I just try to get comparable models, so I'll talk about, I specced out, um, I specced out a model earlier and looks like my screenshot didn't save, but, um, if I wanted to get a terabyte with the Apple pencil pro with the magic keyboard, cause that's all the stuff I would get. Cause there is more Ram. We'll talk about that in the pros, but there is more Ram right. when you go up to the terabyte. Right. And the screen. Yeah, that the the nano texture screen, which we'll talk about. Yeah, but if I were to get the comparable iPad Air, it's about a. I think if I did the other one, it was like a eight hundred dollar difference. Wow! So it'll cost me eight hundred dollars more to get the Pro. I'll just hurry and model that out right now because that's what I think it was. Um, yeah. So the um, the iPad Air, if I got what I would want, including cellular. So this is Space Gray, Terabyte, Cellular, Apple Pencil Pro, which we'll talk about, Magic Keyboard, mm-hmm. um, Apple Likes, 1776 bucks. So we're not mm-hmm. talking cheap if you really want to deck that out, but right. it's 200 bucks for Cellular. It's, um, you know, if you went from 256 to a Terabyte, that's $400. So easy to shave off easy to shave off money if you're just going with the with the ipad air now again with the lifestyle i'm planning on having living in my rv and all that kind of stuff i've figured out i think i figured out my internet solution so i don't think that'll be a problem downloading but you just okay it's not going to be my gig fiber connection here so i'm not going to want to have to always download you know or stream stuff on the fly i'm going to want to say oh let's watch this last season of alone okay I'll go ahead and download all the episodes overnight. Then they're just sitting on my iPad and we just can watch them. Right. 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 So, so yeah, I think this is going to be super popular. Um, unless you're in the education, unless you're buying it for, um, you know, a, a grandkid or something like that. 
um, this is probably the device you should go for. Unless you're really on a budget. I'm going to skip something here, Jason. Mm -hmm. They announced at the end that they dropped the price of the 10th gen iPad to 349 bucks. Right. So, right. Um, I don't remember what it was before I can look that up real fast, but for the 10th gen, which is the, um, let's see, you know, which is a great device for the kids. Um, right. That, that is the iPad that anyone who's not in school, who's not in, you know, they don't need it for any kind of productivity, right? You're just buying it for your, your, your grandchild or your, your, your young, uh, uh, you know, your young student or something like that. Right. Then. There's absolutely no reason to even be considering a pro model or even an air. This ten Col generation iPad is still yeah, and it's still got awesome. Real colors too, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's the the get you out of the home button, which is the ninth gen. So it gets you out of the home button, gets you into the modern design with the. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Touch ID in this one, but it was four forty nine, so they dropped it by a hundred bucks. So okay. you know that's that probably should be the one you consider for little kids, for consumption devices, for that kind of stuff. Um, but this Air, I think, should probably be the default for most everyone. Yeah, yeah, especially, like we said, students and stuff like that. So the 10th gen still uses Touch ID in the, in the, um, the power button. Yeah. So yeah. no Face ID in that one. Yeah. Which is still, still it, it's works fine. really good. I really yeah. want Face ID on the next Mini. I don't think I'm going to get it. So... Yeah, I think it's going to be a smaller version of this yeah. of this pro of this yeah. uh, the current generation pro. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, that that's a really good price. I didn't realize it dropped so much, but 100 bucks, so 349. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a deal. So we finally Jason got news wait. on the pro. Jason can't wait. Jason's yeah. like <laughs> my long nightmare is over sort of. Almost over. Almost over. So, but at least we know what we're getting. So uh, I see here you like the intro video. I did too, right? And it took more about this and, and when we get to the what we were right about section, but did you see everything that was on the stage, right? Tried. That was a, a music lot. and it had a piano. Yeah, there was a trumpet sitting at the top. There was all of these different colors. Uh, uh, there Paint. was all of this different. Uh, uh, yep, yep. All of the different uh, like precision equipment and stuff. And it had one of those presses that... These uh, YouTube uh, uh, channels are going viral for squishing stuff together. You ever watch any of those? No. So huge craze right now where they're taking like uh, hydraulic presses and they're smushing, uh, you know, computers and phones and laptops and things that are squishy and food and toys and everything. And it's just it's crazy. So they basically took that concept, put everything on the stage and they smushed it all down flat. And when it popped up, it was all into a uh, into the new iPad. So really cool intro video. I like that. Here's what they should have done. So, Tim, I know you listen. So right. this is what you should have done. <laughs> Saturday was Star Wars Day. Why yep. did you not have Darth Vader pinching his fingers going? Right, and right. Having it and just smushing it, it all together. <laughs> yeah, just saying. That would have been cool. So like the iPad Air. It's it's two sizes, right? We're getting away from this twelve point nine or or uh, eleven point something or other, and they're just calling it the eleven and thirteen inch, which uh, I think is a good idea. It's kind of simplified things. You know what you're looking for. You want the big screen or you want the regular screen? Yeah. So uh, eleven thirteen inch, um, two colors. I was kind of hoping for more. Yeah. But. Even if there were more, I'm sure I was going to be disappointed with those color options, right? So yeah, probably. I, yeah, yeah. So just space black and and what is the silver one? Oh, it's just silver. It's, it's silver. not starlight or anything like that. You, so the you two know what colors. I want? I'll tell you what I want. Which one? I want what, what? red, and I want the keyboard and pencil to match it. Right, a product red keyboard and. You don't think that'll be too red? <laughs> Is that <laughs> too possible? Uh, probably not. If it's a good red, right? The good leather looking red that they do they did on the iPhone cases. Remember that? Yeah. That really yeah. bold product red. And and uh even on the uh the bumper that they had, that really like matted kind of kind of uh subtle red, not subtle, 
not the salmon color red, but it was like a red red. You right. know what I mean? Yep. Um, I agree with you. That probably would look really good. But or my forest green, of course, <laughs> that yep. would look. But incredible. knowing the trend that trend that Apple's going down, the road they're going down, it would have been a more salmon color red yeah, keyboard. No. And would you want to walk around with a salmon? With, and I would have ended up with space black anyway. So <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But yeah, I'm with you. If it was a good red, I could I can do that. But space black, uh, I went with the black this time instead of the uh, the silver model. Spoiler: the last... Jason bought oh. something. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll save that for later. I'll save that for later. But the last few iPads that I had. And when I say the last few, I think the last one I had was the gold one. And that was maybe the first gen iPad Pro. Did that one come and go? I, I think so. Remember. Yeah, it's been a while. But all of my iPads have been silver. So I wanted to change it up a little bit. But more on that later, what, what we decided to go with. Um, the new OLED display. Hold on, hold on. I want to go back to something here. I What's find that? it interesting that the 13 inch is thinner than the 11 inch and right. well it's more space for the battery yeah i'm thinking battery but also you've got that camera bump that yep. we'll talk about so do they have to but this new ipad is the thinnest apple product ever it's it thinner than the ipad uh, nano the nano yep and it's 20 the new 13 inch is 25 percent lighter than the one you traded in too early. Yeah. Now, so, I'm I'm not a big deal, right? I think the 11 inch getting thinner and lighter is probably a good thing. For me, the mm -hmm. 13 inch getting thinner and lighter, I mean, one pound versus one and a half pounds in my backpack just doesn't mean a whole lot, especially where yeah. when I had the, I mean, you remember my backpack, I used to have my 12 Everything. inch from work. I used to have my 11 <laughs> inch from home. And all my other stuff, it just didn't matter. So, but right. I just think it's interesting that we're now to the point where something that can operate as a full blown computer and a laptop replacement, depending on your needs, is thinner than those iPod Nanos. Yeah. Quick side note Greg used to carry around, and I, I kind of do the same as long as it's near, whether it's in a car or something. But Greg used to carry around every charger ever for everything. You could come to him and say, Hey, Greg, do you have a Charger for my old 1982, <laughs> one of those ribbon printers, and he'll be like, yeah, I have it in my backpack. <laughs> I'm not that bad anymore, but I will tell you, so maybe one time we'll have to talk about how we carry our gear, but the backpack I use is an actual hiking backpack. It just happens to have a laptop sleeve right. in it. And the bottom section, which is designed for your shoes or stuff that you don't want to get mixed in with the rest of the thing, is right. this big giant pocket, and it's just loaded with cables and adapters. Still. Right, right. So, so you, you've uh, uh, you've worked on that habit. You, you've improved on that. You're saying you don't carry every I've single just, cable. I've just improved how I manage it. So, okay, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that whenever we get to one of those episodes where we talk about how we carry our gear, but. Yeah, yeah. Greg, do you have a old Atari AC adapter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have it in my bag. <laughs> okay, so OLED display. We knew this was coming. This was one of those rumors that kept hanging around for the last couple of models uh, that's been that's been released, right? So we knew we were going to get an OLED display eventually. But Apple did something a little different, as they usually do, right? And they took two... OLED panels, laminated them together, and they're calling it Tandem. Is it Tandem OLED or was tandem it? Tandem OLED, yep. Yeah. So Tandem OLED. So what it does is it it gives you awesome brightness. We're not going to go too deep into the specs, right, because um, th this is just a hot take kind of thing. But super bright. Uh, the peak brightness is the brightest on any kind of monitor in its size. Uh, the XDR, precision display, so blacks are going to look even blacker. Uh, reds are going to look even redder. You're going to see more dew on the flower petals and stuff like that. Uh, really good move, I think, by just not giving us an improved display, but actually making this thing, uh, you know, future proofing, at least for the next few generations, this monitor is going to look better than, than anything that's released. Now, I know, of course, the next MacBook and the next iPad is going to look better than this one. 
But for 90 percent of the monitors this size on the market, this thing is going to look awesome for the next few years. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, I mean, Ultra Retina XDR is what they called it. I don't, right. you know, they got to use their combination of ultras and XDRs and, Retina and Retinas displays, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> it's going to get super bright. I mean, the peak brightness will be really, really high end. And they're calling it not just tablet, but they are calling it the world's most advanced display, right. which is a pretty big claim. And we know it's Apple marketing and PR and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. uh, I think it's going to be pretty incredible. And I can't wait to get my hands on one and see what it looks like compared to like yeah. the screen that I'm looking at right now, which is in my MacBook Pro. Right, right. And, you know, usually when Apple says that, it, you know how technology moves along pretty quickly, you know, with, with uh, so much competition and stuff. But usually when Apple says that, it's usually true for the next few months. So yeah. this is literally going to be the most advanced display, at least for the next few months until new products catch up and, and get released. So, right. yeah, I'm like I'm like you. I really want to see this thing in action. But not only to see how it looks and how bright it is, they, they mentioned a new feature called nano textured glass uh, display or overlay. Yeah. Something that they're adding to the screen. Now, this is not an option that's available in all models. This is just... Uh, from what I remember uh, during my ordering process for one terabyte and up, right? So it's going to yeah. only be available for those two models, the one terabyte and the two terabyte. Um, no nothing else is even going to be an option for. And what it seemed like, and they kind of briefly talked about it. This is one of those things where we're going to go into more details next week as more information comes out. Review units go out to our favorite uh, uh, reviewers and stuff like that. But it looks like a texture screen, you know, it's just not going to be that smooth gorilla glass. What What are you thinking that that looks like, Rick? So they already do this on their five thousand dollar XDR Pro XDR displays. They have this as an option. So okay, I didn't. I didn't realize this was already out. Okay. Yeah, what it's designed for is color extreme environments or to reduce glare and some of those kinds of things. Now, the catch is it's gotten mixed reviews. So some people say that it makes text less crisp. One of the biggest complaints is that it's hard to clean because um, you can't just mm -hmm. clean it like normal. And in fact, right. Apple on the Pro XDR display said only use our special cleaning cloth. Now, I don't know how true that is, but you know what I mean? So there's, yeah. there's some nuances to that. So I don't know. Um, I guess if you're constantly going to be outside and you're working in Dubai or something like that, mm -hmm. and glare is, you care so much about glare so you can see your screen really well with it. Right. Like at a construction site with a case yeah. on it. Yeah, a construction um, site, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess that would be good. But I think for most people, you're just, it's probably just not necessarily, especially where it can go up to 1600 nits. Of peak brightness, which is super, super bright, right? So, right. Uh, that's my take on it. That's what I I was trying to do yeah. a little bit of research before we hit record, and I just saw that it's 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 kind of a mixed set of opinions. Yeah, I I, I thought it was going to be something like you remember when we used to get um there was like matted screen protectors that you would you would buy on on Amazon. The Zag now, we went ones to the that weren't glass, right? Right. The Zag ones right. that were that film it, yes and what it did was make when you're writing on it with a pencil it made it feel like more like paper more like yeah. you're writing on on a uh on a surface and not just a smooth piece of glass uh gorilla glass or, or whatever they may be uh that's what i thought it was for originally but it, it's actually used for to yeah. improve the display too it's not yeah. just uh okay so again like you said it may not be for everyone uh namely because it's only available on the top two most expensive models yeah. being the terabyte and the uh, the two terabytes. So, um, yeah, I kind of paused for a second uh, during the order process because I'm like, do I want to see this in action? Do I want to go to the store and see this? But uh, I quickly talked myself down because, like Greg said, that uh, one terabyte model puts it way out of my the budget that I had for this and. Uh, <laughs> you keep spoiling what you're buying, Jason. I, I know, I know, but I'm gonna uh, have it all figured out by the time you're done. <laughs> so, but yeah, I um, uh, 
I, I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna do that anyway. So, but still, like you, I'm I'm excited to see it in action. So as soon as I can get my hands on one and, and take a look at it, I I want to check out that that um, display, that overlay, or or whatever they call it. So the display is one thing, which is greatly improved, but something that really caught me. I'm not going to say caught me off guard because you were actually right about this. This was one of the things that you mentioned from a rumor that you heard and that we were going to skip the M3 processor and go right to M4. Well, now, let's be clear. German reported it. Right, right, right. But you, he hedged. You know, we're not inside. Inside. Yeah, he hedged a little bit. But I just didn't think this was going to happen. Yeah. But they explained when they started talking about the jump, they explained that they didn't have a choice, which before you get into the specs on this mm -hmm. makes sense on the delay. Right. And they're not right. just taking a chip that's been around for months, which means it's been in development for years and plugging it in. Mm hmm it would make sense that there could have been some delays, right? I mean, we were worried about what does this mean? The fact that we we're supposed to get these in March and there was a rumor there was a software update. Well, yeah, there was going to be a software update because, Jason, yep. what did we get? We got the M4 chip. Yep. And and we'll, we'll talk about the specs here briefly, but like you were saying, it, it does make sense now, the delay, because they just weren't taking the M3 chip that, that had – already been in the MacBook um, and throwing it in the iPad, this is something they had to work out a few more kinks. So I'm glad they took a few more weeks to give us the M4 rather than getting it a few months back and just going with the M3 because they could have yeah. just as easily did that. Also, well, they couldn't. I mean, they explained this because the M4 has the new display engine. So right. the only way they can power this world's most advanced display is What's with on the, the next M4. Chip? So my question that I put in here is, does this mean that this iPad screen technology is going to now come to other products? Because I do not see them putting that display engine in just for the iPad Pro. Right. right? Yes, but I don't see an M4 MacBook this year. Not while this one is still. Yeah, maybe you know. not. But will it get this tandem OLED, right? And right. is that right. better than what I've got on my MacBook Pro right now? So I, we don't know the answer, of course. But that's just right. one of the questions that I raised is, um, is will they do that? And the reality is, I said this about the M2 in the Air. Unless there's software features that are going to take advantage of the new chip stuff. Mm-hmm. Does it really matter if it's a two, a three, a four, except for the efficiency stuff, which I'm sure you'll get to. So, yeah. 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 Another thing, too, I was I was kind of hung up on. If you remember the conversation we had right after uh, our episode about the MacBook and stuff and the model you went with and we're saying, OK, what does this mean for the iPads coming up next year? And we were confused, like, what? Would Apple do an M3 Pro iPad and an M3 iPad and an M3 Max iPad and all of this? Well, it seems like they eliminated that problem and just went with the M4, right? Instead of some models having an M3 Pro and some models, the one terabyte and the two terabyte being an M3 Max or or something like that. No, just put an M4 in it, right? Just kind of yeah. simplify things. So, uh, so we don't have to have, six different models of each screen size of, of each model of iPad. Um, I think this really simplifies things. So I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad they went with it. I would have been happy with the M3, but the M4 um, really improves things. I mean, leaps and bounds over the previous generation. So you want to talk about some specs here? I mean, I didn't put down a whole lot of specs, but now it's got the the power efficiency improvements, which I think is a big deal. Right, because right. you're going to be powering a much brighter display and all yep. of the tech that goes into it. So if you're going to make it thinner and all of these new hardware things that require energy, 
that means you got to put less battery in. Yeah. So it has to be more efficient. The neural engine, of course, AI workload acceleration. Don't yeah. even know what that means, but maybe we'll find <laughs> out at WWDC. So I caught this. It said yeah. it was going to be four times faster than the M M2 at a quarter of the power yeah. that it took. And remember, that was my big deal was the battery life in that M2 was just horrible. Yeah. Hopefully it's improved in the air, um, which it should be because it, it's, uh, it's specced out differently. But, yeah, four times faster than the M2. That That's yeah. that's going to be yeah. awesome. Uh, I did look this up, and we'll see if Jason drops his head and says I should have done something different on my purchase or not. But 8 gigs of RAM in everything that's under a terabyte. And 16 gigs mm. in the one terabyte and two terabyte models. So I just looked that up on the, that's actually published on Apple's website now. So, yeah. So I knew that was going to be a thing because that's always the thing with that one terabyte model, but I didn't know it's, it was going to be double. <laughs> it's a, that's big, right? That's a big, uh, big jump. So, wow. Okay. Jason, do we need to pause and you need to go cancel and place a different order? Well, I, so I have my order on. I didn't want the chip date or the delivery date to slip out. So I have my order on. I'm I'm going to look into that after we after we wrap up here. I'm yeah, just I, so I'm just telling you that I'm looking and it's still, it's still the day one, one I was specking out is still May 15th. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> Well, I didn't realize it was going to be that much I would of a have different. thought 12, right, or something like that. But 8 to yeah. 16, that's a pretty big deal. But um, it's also a $400 difference yeah. between 512 and a terabyte. Yeah. So it's not cheap. It is not coming. Double the storage, double the RAM, double yep. the – yeah. Well, so, so, yeah, okay. I think those are all the specs I put down. I mean, we'll – and get into all yeah. the geeky stuff. Somebody else will, but and you can go see it on Apple's website because they'll put up the how many faster yeah. than everything else in the world stuff. But those are the things that I cared about. Yeah, the thermal performance too. You mentioned by twenty percent. My old iPad did get hot when I was doing things. Some, uh, some you know, putting together some video, uh, 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 you know, editing and stuff like that. It did get really hot. So even reducing that by twenty percent. That's probably going to be a noticeable difference. So thermal also performance, they less, thought enough to mention it. Also means less throttling, though, too. That's part of the reason right. why it's going to be 4X faster is it's just not going to throttle as often. I still have not heard the fans spin up on my MacBook. Really? So, yeah. Okay. No, have not heard them. Even when I'm rendering, the most complicated thing I do, which has been doing some memory swap, is we're using Riverside. And mm -hmm. there's something that goes on when I'm processing and all that kind of stuff that does some memory swap but i haven't heard the fans spin up like ever so um just hasn't been a problem which means also not throttling so. yeah so as far as ipad os like we said we mentioned we weren't we weren't we were hopeful i was hoping to see a thing uh, a couple of things about the uh, operating system and we did get a couple of apps we'll talk about that but no major no spoilers no hints to um, features that are going to be included in the uh, the next version of iPad OS, right? Um, I see here you got some references to some uh, color matching mode. Um, yeah, stage that's, manager. We knew yeah. that's one of the biggest features about having an iPad was to you know compete with uh, laptop replacements as they call it. So stage manager is always going to be front and center when they're talking about an uh, iPad Pro. Um, so they showed a little bit of that. Um, maybe some multi-monitor support and stuff like that that they didn't show that they're holding uh, for WWDC. Uh, Core ML, you know, they they mentioned some some new uh, architecture, not new, but um, you know, powerful uh, improvements. But really, nothing big as far as iPad OS. You no. know, it's just kind of a brief little mention uh, while they're talking about hardware specs, and that's kind of what we expected, right? Yeah, but this was my biggest disappointment when they brought it up. Is that? Um, I thought, okay, maybe they're at least going to say we've got some new stuff coming at WWDC that will take advantage of this amazing new chip that we put together. And they did nothing related to that, right? I mean, we didn't really expect right. them to say what they were going to do, but at least tell us that 
we did this chip because we needed to for the display, mm -hmm. but we also did this chip because we've got some really exciting stuff to to show you um, come WWDC. I mean, the the video introducing this with the press and combining all of that stuff, some of that fine, right? But like, right. can you manage multiple video feeds on an iPad? Can you manage multiple audio feeds on an iPad? Can you even switch your audio source on an iPad and control it that way if you have two right. available? The answer to that is no, right? And there's definitely yeah. not a chip restriction so yeah, yeah I, I mean it's just it's frustrating that if you plug an external mic in it's going to go to that automatically and you don't have a in any recording software you don't have the option of saying i want to use this one versus that one it just it defaults yeah. so yeah little especially bit since they didn't mention uh so i'm looking at the specs uh on on apple's website and it does say that this uh the usb-c is now a thunderbolt port um, but no details, no extra information, no. So, you know, we, we don't know what it's going to be capable of, but it does say Thunderbolt USB four on yeah. the, uh, the USB C connector. So we know that hardware wise, it's going to be capable of so much more, but, uh, as far as iPad OS and, and all of that, they played it pretty close to the vest, uh, with this announcement and didn't let any hints, any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, speculation is going to be there. I'm pretty sure people are going to really be speculating, but yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't drop yeah. any hints. It was just, I, I was disappointed. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't don't mention it. <laughs> if you're going to yeah. do that, I'd rather you not mention it. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but with the apps, uh, final cut pro and, uh, uh, logic pro was uh two new apps they got introduced last year around WWDC, right? No, it was before. Cuz remember they got leaked out. They were part of that controlled leak that that they were doing uh, uh last year if you remember all right. of the uh the stuff that they had going on with that. Um they're already getting updates. So here they are less than a year later, they're already getting two major updates. So they're going to render video faster, all of the updates you would expect, right? Final Cut is going to allow multicam uh, uh, editing and stuff like that. Uh, they announced a new app that we'll be able to put on our phones potentially. So I don't know. I mean, you and I don't do local recording. We're using Riverside to do that. But right. um, it's called Final Cut Camera, and you can put it on your phones. And that's what allows you to put Final Cut Pro on your iPad, be a producer, mm -hmm. have five people with cameras and be able to switch back and forth and control and do all the kinds of things you would normally do like from a from a Mac or something like that. And but yeah. then they also mentioned that it would be a standalone recording app with all the manual controls that you would want to record yeah. video to. So it's interesting that they're stepping outside of the camera app for some video stuff and doing something standalone. Right, right. And you're, you're right. I mean, they're stepping outside of the app, but the camera app is still going to be available, right? This is obviously geared towards pros. Yes. You know what sure. I mean? This is obviously geared towards people who make a living of uh, filming, capturing, recording, and editing uh, uh, videos. And uh, just to give it a little something more to them and not overcomplicate the camera app. I don't know if you ever grabbed an Android phone. You mentioned it before. You did grab an Android phone. To me, and I know that's, that's kind of a fish out of water thing. If I spend more time with it, I'll probably be able to adjust to it like every other Android user. But man, that camera seems really complicated just to snap a picture. You know what I mean? So without having to do that, let's take those features out of the basic camera app and add them to a more professional version. So the people who need that level of, uh, of uh, precision there's an app available from it for, for them directly from Apple, but not have to tweak the uh, the basic camera app so much to to make it, you know, unintuitive or unuser friendly uh, as it is in its current state. So yeah, I mean we've talked about this. It's getting so there's getting to be so much in iOS that it's it's hard to yeah. find all the things. Discoverability is a problem. So. 
let the pros yeah. go to another app to do it, but make all the things that normal people would want to try out or would want to know is available, make it available to them in the right. base app. Right. So if you want to tinker, if you want to tweak your apps and stuff like that, Apple has a new app for you. There's an app for that. Remember that old saying? Yep. <laughs> There's an app yep. for that. And then uh, Logic Pro is uh, uh, another one. So I looked at this and thought, is GarageBand going away? How do you think this is going to affect? Well, because this is a paid app. It's behind a paywall. It's not free. Yeah, it's a uh, subscription, um, but it's pretty cheap, right? Yeah, it's, a, but... it's reasonable. But yeah. could this spell the end of GarageBand? I don't what know. Do you think? Maybe the one thing I'm thinking about the I think they called it the stem splitter, and I didn't. I lost, got a little bit lost. But like, could we take an audio track like you and I both talking and pull the audio track down and split out you versus me? Because right. what they talked about, right. right, was being able to pull out the key inputs like the voice, the bass, the drums. You know, yeah, that for sampling stuff. and stuff like that. Yeah, really for cool. Remixing, so, and when I saw that, that was on on my surprise list, like. All of that from an iPad, like, you know, you think of music producers and stuff, they have to have some pretty advanced equipment to be able to take an audio track and and be able to split what they need from that for a sample, you know, for a new right. song or something that they're mixing, yep. you know, some pretty high level equipment. And now you can do it from your iPad Pro. I thought that was really amazing. That that yeah. really stood out to me. And I'm not a music producer or uh, 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 musician or, or anything like that. You know, I I was in middle school band, so I'm kind of like a professional, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago. But Logic Pro, uh, I think these were some really good updates for these two, uh, these two apps. So that brings us to the camera. Oh, I think my keyboard died. So the camera. It's never been a big deal for me on the iPad since the first, not the first iPad, because the camera, the first iPad didn't have a camera. The iPad 2 was the first one with a camera, I believe. Or was it the Retina? The iPad 3, which is what they were calling the Retina iPad or whatever, was the first one with a camera. It always annoyed me so much for people to be at graduations or the zoo or some kind of an event holding up that iPad recorded. It always annoyed me from, from day one. And people still do it to this day. You're right. We were in uh, Arizona for my wife's graduation and the lady a couple of rows in front of me would hold up her big iPad Pro and just block the entire section while she's recording her. So I never really paid too much attention to the specs or the improvements to the camera on the iPad. But uh, we'll just run through them real quick. There's a 12 mega, megapixel back camera with the, the LiDAR scanner, which I believe is going to allow um, uh, to be able to do those. What do they call those? When they do the 3D renderings? For, yeah, the AR stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that AR stuff. Angry we'll we'll Birds, get into the specs and stuff Angry next Birds week. Birds had an AR version that um, yeah. you could play, and it would use the LiDAR scanner on your phone and stick the Angry Birds environment right. on your living and room your, floor and then you have yeah. to go knock them down that was pretty fun yeah and and i do it a lot with uh certain things from amazon you know certain products they yes. allow you to be able to view yep. it in the uh, room as well as the apple store too allows you to view products and stuff live so uh improved lidar scanner it's it's going to make that kind of stuff cooler but as far as gaming and stuff uh i don't really take advantage of any of that um but again really cool improvement if you're into iPad photography, which I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, adaptive true tone flash, that's good. Uh, they showed the document scanning, which can be a problem. I scan documents with my iPad mini quite often. So right. that would be nice to have that. So. Okay. So then, again, in, in, but the big one, the big one there is that the front facing camera went landscape. Right. And and again, we knew it was coming because of that, that the previous iPad. Yeah. Um, we just didn't know when. We didn't know why it was so delayed. But yeah, we finally got it. I use yeah. mine maybe ninety to ninety five percent of the time. I use my iPad in, in landscape mode. Uh the, actually the only time I use it in uh portrait mode is when I'm laying in the bed at night, uh getting ready to go to bed and I'm either purchasing something or looking at a few videos or something, that's really the only time. Whenever I'm during the day and I'm being productive or 
uh, I'm using my iPad for something is always in landscape mode. So it just made sense because I always cover that camera. Yeah. Uh, to uh, the Face ID camera or, uh, you know, trying to purchase a, a used uh, Apple Pay or something like that. I'm always covering it. And the uh, iPad charger, too, is now on that side right above. They the said it was pencil. a redesign. The, the pencil. Uh, yeah, the pencil. Uh, yeah, redesigned the pencil charger, charger was something. already there, right? And there was a concern about whether they were going to be able to put all the cameras because Face ID is on that side now too. So all the cameras right. and the Apple Pencil charger are all on that same side yeah. now. And there was a question of whether they'd be able to make that work. Yeah. So they got it to work. Um, I'm pretty sure that the charger is probably a bit more powerful to charge the newer pencil, which we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, yeah, they, they they managed to make it work. So uh, accessories. Add this to the disappointment list. Yeah, this might have been this. This was really close to my top disappointment too. Yeah. So the Magic Keyboard, personally, this is my personal feeling. I always thought it was way overpriced for what Apple gives. Now I know it's an Apple keyboard. The quality is is unmatched by any third party. Well, except maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. There's some case manufacturers, though, that make some really good high quality cases. Um, but we're, again, we're talking about Apple's design. Um, the texture, the materials and stuff they use is always high quality, but always overpriced, in, in my opinion. And with this new keyboard, not much has changed, right? Bigger trackpad, um, palm rest. It's aluminum a new now, function the palm key. rest is, but. Right, right. A uh, new function row key where you can adjust the brightness and stuff uh, uh, right from the keyboard, just like the MacBook. It looks like a MacBook keyboard, but still that same price range, which is three fifty. I want to say three fifty for the thirteen. Yeah, the, and only one USB C port for pass through charging. Right, right. And I, this is yeah. not what we thought we were going to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I we had the conversation that if the keyboard came with Basically, a, a USB dock under it, right? It gave you a couple of USB port, USB C ports, uh, maybe an SD card reader, maybe uh, you know some just some other features to kind of enhance that that uh, uh, the the use of the keyboard. That I would be on board for for paying even up to you know maybe four ninety nine for it, right? Because it eliminates the use yeah. of needing a hub. It eliminates yep. the use of of uh, having to have all of these external accessories along with the iPad, um, they didn't do it. They didn't no. do it. They basically gave you an upgraded, uh, a minimal upgraded version of the, the Magic Keyboard is out with the same price range. And that, that's a hard pass for me. <laughs> I yeah. think I told Greg when I text you, I'm like, whatever it is, I know it's not 150 bucks, so I'm automatically out. <laughs> yeah, I just included it in my when i spec this one out but i think i'll see what some of the other manufacturers do because it's just yeah you still gotta have a hub so like right now if i wanted to record straight off of the ipad i've i'd still have to have um well maybe it would work if i just plugged in my microphone but i'd most likely have to have a USB-C hub right to do anything so that was it was disappointing i was hoping we would actually get something and like you i, I mean i had already told you i'd pay a lot more because yeah the, every hub i bought has been garbage and so if apple's gonna make one and put the keyboard in it or put it in the keyboard it's going to be better than anything and it would work right in with the os and all that kind of stuff so yeah even if bridge or somebody comes out with one that's got the USB-C hub built in, it just can't guarantee it's going to play nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. We can't. The part of the reason too, and we'll talk, we'll save this for next week when we go over our, uh, when we go deeper into it. But I think part of the reason why we didn't see an updated keyboard is because we didn't see an updated magic connector. Uh, yeah. that, that's the, uh, the pins on the back of the keyboard. Now they didn't mention it. That's not to say we won't get, some expanded functionality is something at WWDC and they may announce a keyboard or some other accessories, but they didn't mention it when they talked about hardware and that, that makes a difference whether or not we get a more powerful keyboard uh, or magic keyboard, because uh, you would still need to connect it, right? They st right. It still would need to communicate 
with the iPad. So there's no improvements to the the, the Magic Connector. There's no improved uh, uh, Magic Keyboard either. So so really, all you're getting is a palm, uh, aluminum palm rest instead of whatever they were using before, which was what well, I don't know what it was. It like a plasticky, fabricy kind of thing. It was the same and, texture on the outside of the keyboard. Yeah, it was just that same rubber. Little bit larger trackpad so um, yeah. yeah i don't know we'll see yeah. when i get there we'll see yeah it's it's going to be a pass for me but um I, i'm excited to see what the other case manufacturers do will it work like with said, your existing keyboard I, I believe so because the body looks the same although the screen is a little bigger the camera uh, uh housing um looks the same it looks so, the same it could be a little I mean, off don't sell yours for a week at least yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna check to see, and and also too, I probably won't sell it until I get ready to purchase a new keyboard for it because right. I'm gonna use the funds for that one for the the next yeah. keyboard. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna I'm gonna also too. I didn't see if the uh, the Magic Connector was in the same place. I need to go back. These are hot takes. Like we're on right after the uh, yeah, the, the yeah. presentation. I hadn't went and looked at any of the uh, 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 the website, any of the promotional art and stuff that they have. So. But yeah, big disappointment on the keyboard. The next one is never really been a big deal for me. Uh, you heard my rant before about uh, the the price of the the Apple Pencil compared to some of these knockoffs, which function just as good, right? We talked right. about that one USB-C that Apple released and the price that they put on that thing. And I'm like, why? Because it functions just like my $14 one that I got from Amazon. <laughs> so the Apple Pencil got a big update, right? Now they're calling it the Apple Pencil Pro is the latest version. The Can I tell you that the way they transitioned from, I uh, can't remember who said we've got a new Apple Pencil. It was probably John or somebody like that. But to the lady that went through the specs, they just had somebody drawing pencil sketches on the iPad. And then eventually it becomes color. And then it's the actual... Uh, scene that was really right. cool. I thought that was super awesome. That was one of my yeah. favorite parts of the show. Yeah, I like that that one. Um, the 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 picture that he was uh, drawing uh, when they when they had it testing, and it was kind of like it looked like I don't know if you've seen seen the Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cartoon. So yep. it kind of looked like that, right? It looked like he was uh, designing a scene from from that yeah. movie. It was that type of art, and. Yeah. uh Look really cool. The the, the colors yeah. really pop. Were really vibrant. So, yeah, I like it. Not really a fan of the Apple pencil though. Again, I have my fourteen dollar one that's sitting here on the on the ledge by my bed, and I'm well, content with that. I am. So this, because you know the kind of art stuff that I do, right? With the right. temple drawings and stuff that I do, and some of those kinds of things. Plus, I like to write with it. But I think this is great. So there's a new sensor which is squeeze for the tool palette. So basically, you squeeze it, and it'll pull up. Like one of the problems I have when I'm using it on my mini is that palette doesn't come and go like I like it to. There seems to be some sort of a glitch, but if I can just squeeze okay. and it pulls up the palette and I choose what I want and then it goes away, that's going to be, that's going to be awesome. And you don't even need to touch the screen um, to do some of that kind of stuff. So we'll see how it works. Yeah. Um, roll for precision. So I thought this was cool in the procreate part of the demo because they showed how um, they have, they were, like drawing a stool or something like that. And they needed to do a vertical line. So they put it down, but then they needed to do the same line horizontally. So they just roll the pencil in their hand and it shows the actual line rolling. And then you know where you're going to place it. So that was right. super, super cool. Um, so that can change the size. It can change the orientation, introduce color, a couple of those kinds of things. So I definitely want to mm -hmm. play with it. And then it's got Find My Support. Uh, I generally don't lose mine, but that's good to have in everything. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, haptic feedback for things like alignment when they were drawing that stool. or No, it was when they were placing the street lights in that scene that they were drawing in Procreate. Yeah. Um, it was given haptic feedback when it was lined up. Uh, it allowed them to move and rotate objects at the same time, which lets you create animation. And then double tap is still available, which is just switch between like pencil and eraser or, you know, whatever you set it to in the app that you're looking on, which is something that I use, um, use quite a bit. So yeah, okay. I'm 
I'm in on this one. I'll this is probably going to stay on my list of things to get. And it does work with the iPad Air as okay. well. So it isn't just with the Pro, so it will work with the Air. So um yeah. I'm excited about it. I thought this was a this was a good thing. I know people wanted a physical button, but yeah. It'd be nice to have yeah. something that was easier to erase, like to be able to flip the pencil around and just start yeah. doing the erase part, but that's not how it's set up. So do you think you can do without the physical button with the haptic feedback and stuff like that? I mean, because we've fine. seen Apple make them feel I'm, like real buttons. Yeah, I mean, I've been fine without the physical buttons in the yeah. past. Even the double tap, that's where people, they don't like it because either they accidentally trigger it or mm -hmm. it doesn't work when they want it to. I just haven't had those problems with it. So I, I, I'm, I don't want a button and have it cost 50 bucks more, right? Yeah. So... I'd rather they do the flip the pencil around and the other side erases. That would be cool. So let's talk about the pricing real quick, because if you remember a couple of months back, we had a pretty good scare. Well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> we had a pretty good scare on, uh, on the pricing. And while it did increase, it wasn't as outrageous as, as we thought it was going to be. Well, as the rumor said, now, a few weeks ago, uh, before the, the last uh, release that we thought we were going to have, about a week or so before that, um, the pricing seemed like it kind of got back to normal, right? So the the 12-inch, uh, I'm sorry, the 11-inch model is starting at 1199 Yeah. right? Which is a, a pretty hefty increase. bucks if I... Yeah. Because I, I just quickly went to Best Buy because you can't find them on Apple. I couldn't at the time. Right. But Best Buy has has it as base price of eight ninety nine. Right. Uh, so I, I do. I remember starting today up. It was nine hundred bucks. So yeah. like eight ninety nine. Um, pretty hefty increase for that entry level. But we're talking two generations. I think it seems like uh, advanced, right? Rather than just an incremental speed bump, going to the M three giving you uh, um, just a basic OLED screen and things like that. Um, things that could have kept the price the same. I don't think this iPad would have been a big deal as it is now. So yeah. eleven ninety nine starting off for the. Uh, well, the other thing there is that the eleven inch never got the micro LED screen that the twelve point nine got. So it's like two screen technologies behind. Right. So and I think there was right. a price bump when the twelve point nine got that new screen tech, and so. I think that's part of it is the 11 inch really other than processor change hasn't gotten anything in a couple of gens. Yeah. So kind of makes sense. And 300 bucks. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal, but that if you don't want to pay $1,200 and you're getting this 11 inch, you really should consider the pair. Right. You And exactly. And that's, that's what I was going to say. If you know, that price is a factor for you, but the performance is not a big deal for you. Then the air is perfect. Yeah, yep. the air is perfect for you. So, um, so yeah, big jump there. Not so much of a big jump with the uh, with the thirteen inch, right? We're going from eleven ninety nine, which was the entry level, uh, one hundred twenty eight gigabytes for the uh, the M two model, which was my model, to uh, twelve ninety nine, which is uh, again, uh, it is a price increase, but not not yeah. terrible. Well, so, all the text the same now. Right. I mean, everything is the same. It's just you're getting yeah. two extra inches of screen real estate. So. Yeah. Yeah. The only difference in them is the is the screen yeah. size. Yep. Right? So I think pricing is, is good. Eh, you know, it, it could. It, it's always good to hear Apple say it's starting at the same price. Right. They did it for the pencil. They made the iPad entry level iPad cheaper. The, the 10th gen made it uh, uh, cheaper by 100 bucks. We always like for Apple to say the price is still the same. Um, this time around with the value that they're giving you, um, I think this increase is, is pretty minimal. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Much better than the 80% price increase or whatever it was that right, they were talking right. about potentially. So. so it, it, it appeared to me at the time, like the entry level iPad that I wanted to, uh, uh, originally go with was going to be about $1,600 at the time. Remember? I was I was pretty bothered. I was pretty upset about it. But I was thinking uh, I was going to have to budget four grand just to yeah, get. 
yeah, just to get it specked out the way you want it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm glad. Uh, you know, price increase is a price increase. Everything is going up, including gas and eggs and and bread. So your iPad is a little more expensive this time around. But uh, again, the value is the value is there. It, it's definitely worth it. The keyboard, uh, I just ranted about that. I'm not happy with the keyboard. I don't think they gave you enough to even justify keeping the price the same because if we're talking about the same the same keyboard, the same magic keyboard now, I think this year around it should be a hundred a hundred and fifty bucks cheaper than than what it yeah. is. So uh I just don't think a bigger, you know, aluminum on the palm rest and a bigger track bat, pad and a row of function keys justifies even keeping the price the same. So I'm out on that. Again, um, if it's within your budget, it's going to be a really good quality keyboard, right? It's from Apple. It's designed and, and manufactured by Apple. So, um, uh, but yeah, two ninety nine for the for the uh, eleven inch and three fifty three forty nine for the um, for the thirteen inch. Um, but it is what it is. The Apple Pencil Pro one twenty nine. Right, so they kept the price the same, right? Wasn't the current version? The I Apple don't Pencil remember. Two, but let's see. I believe what it was one twenty nine. Uh, um, yeah, that sounds right. Um, yeah. I know it wasn't cheap. Uh, the yeah. original Apple Pencil, I think, dropped down to uh, ninety nine bucks or something like that. So, yeah. But yeah, Pro and Second Gen are both one hundred and twenty nine. The Apple Pencil usb c is 79 and then the regular apple pencil first gen you know the one with the cap that pops off that was right. still for sale at 99 bucks yeah so. which, which i think is too expensive with such an old pencil but it's still an apple pencil it's still a really yeah. great pencil but that it's thing should be 49 dollars now it yeah, really I should mean, you still need the apple pencil second generation because the only thing the apple pencil pro works with are the new airs and the new pros yeah. So it won't work with any of the others like my mini. So, yeah. Um, like Greg mentioned earlier, you can order today and it'll be available next Wednesday. <laughs> it's the actual day. Yeah. That was at that to my disappointment list because, um, uh, I, I told you we had some things lined up, some things that got dropped in our laps, but I kind of prioritized going to the Apple store right after we recorded today to go and get it, but eh, I have to put it off until next or week. Or they would have <laughs> said, we have an availability in 30 minutes, and Jason would have been, yeah, we'll record later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recording from my from my new iPad. Yeah. But, hey, I'm willing to wait. You know, I, I'm, I really wanted to know what I was getting myself into, what I waited all of this time for, because, uh, you know, talking about disappointments, all the way up until the ordering process for this one, the iPad trade-in value stayed the same. <laughs> it stayed the same. Now, I would check it. Remember I mentioned before, I would check it uh, periodically since I've traded it to see how much it slipped. Um, I could have kept my iPad to today. Have you checked it today? Yep. Uh, all the way up until the ordering process. I ordered my new one, Jeez. and it offered to trade in my old one for the same value that I got a month ago, a couple of months, uh, you know, a month and a half ago. So, yeah, a little disappointed on that. That's usually not the case, no, especially with the not. iPhone. Especially with the iPhone, that's usually not the case. And I'm thinking because the iPad Air is basically that M2 iPad Pro, right? The internals are, are there's some upgrades in the iPad Air, but still, it's basically the same device. So it's still their current, you know, current device that they're making. Um, so it still has value. It still held the same value which is not the case with the iPhone because when an iPhone, when it's announced, the current model immediately plummets yeah. in value. Yep. You know, I, I say plummet. It usually drops down, you know, a couple of hundred bucks uh, immediately after the announcement. So I just expected the same with the uh, iPad and it just wasn't the case. So yep. sorry for the audio quality again for me jumping the gun, but <laughs> I'll be, at least I'll be back on my microphone and the next few episodes, I'll be back on my on my good quality. Well, mic. not next week because May fifteenth, and we're recording right. on the fourteenth. So one yeah. more episode of Jay with the with my AirPods, I my yeah. my earpods or whatever yep. you know what whatever they're called. But all right, so uh, Jay, let's let's talk. What what did 
What did you buy? I so, think I know what you bought. Yeah. I, I think, cause I kind of mentioned it before I was on the fence. I, w- 128 wasn't going to work for me this time. Right. I still had plenty of space to spare. Um, but what, what I plan on doing, they upgraded the base storage. There is no 128 on the pro. Right. Right. So it starts at 256 now, which is a good yeah. amount, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. which is a good amount. I could have went with that one. Um, and then save myself, I believe it was 200 bucks, <laughs> but, yeah. um, I had my budget. I had my working budget, right? I had my trade in value plus some other old electronics and stuff that I sold. So, uh, I went with 512. I think that that's going to be plenty of space, plenty of storage space for me for what I need to do. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the Ram doubles at one terabyte. It's which is not what I was expecting at all. Still available <laughs> for the 15. So I, I, after the show, I'm going to go in. Again, I hadn't even looked at the pictures and dug into the specs and stuff myself because we jumped on a record. But, yeah, I'm really leaning towards one terabyte now. Um, I'm, I'm really leaning towards that uh, just to get the extra RAM. And the extra storage is just, you know, that that's way more than I'll need for for. A, a long time so yeah. yeah it is 400 bucks i mean basically you're paying 200 dollars for double memory and 200 dollars for double yeah um, storage yeah. so ah is it worth it i don't know depends on what you're gonna do with it and how long you're gonna hold on to the ipad but the way things are going this ipad could be around for i mean normally it's about 18 months in between right maybe longer now that they've gen skipped a a processor but yeah, yeah, and I was thinking too while uh, you know while watching a presentation, I'm going to get this iPad. I won't jump from this one until the screen goes edge to edge, right? Until they eliminate more bezel yeah. on the uh, on the device. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I went with that. I went with the space black again. My last few generations that I had were all silver uh, until the last gold one, and maybe I'm confused about. Maybe it wasn't even an iPad Pro that I had a gold one, but they've all been silver. So I'm looking for a change. I'm I'm excited for the space black. It looks looks pretty good. Um no Apple likes this time, although um after our conversation earlier about how thin it is and how um you know how much uh, how much lighter it is, um a little worry. <laughs> a little worry about it because I have uh not just crushed my 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 last iPad, but I have sat on it a couple of times. Uh, I have left it in the bed and it got tangled up in a blanket. And then I got into the bed later in the day and laid on top of it. Or um, So a little worried. Um, maybe I should just do maybe a month to month until I feel confident enough that, um, you know, I'm not going to need Apple likes or, or Apple cares, how, however they call it nowadays. Yeah, it's 850 um, a month, which is not horrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I may do that and just add that on. You know, I already pay for our extra iCloud store, so iCloud Plus. So I may uh may just add that in for a few months until I feel comfortable instead of just outright paying for it like I did with my watch and my phone and and uh, my wife's phone and and you know a couple of other things. Um, no engraving, of course. No Apple Pencil. Not a fan. Um, uh, I t- told you I was automatically out when they when uh. Uh, they announced the, the upgraded keyboard, which wasn't much of an upgrade. So yeah, so just did, the five twelve space book space did black you get cellular. Uh, so that was another thing too I thought about, and I just don't see myself maintaining a, a cellular plan on that. And it's so convenient now to just right the iPad finds your phone, finds your yeah. hotspot on the phone, and it just. It's just so convenient now. I wouldn't, I would never have my iPad without my phone. Uh, and just like the watch, I just don't see myself maintaining a separate plan for uh, a separate data plan. So I'm like I can get it, just have it just in case, but that just in case brought another 200 bucks in. And I'm just like, uh, I can use that for, for something else. So, uh, so, so 1499. No yes. Fourteen ninety nine. Um, yeah, you should. You should. Since you didn't do cellular, I assumed you were going to do cellular. You should. I think you should go up to the terabyte. You're still coming in under two thousand bucks. I don't right, know what your budget right. was, but right. But it was. Yeah. It was. 
it was 18. So it was not so far off, you know, yeah. not, not so far. I actually saved a little bit by going, you know, 16 uh, and, and some change or whatever with uh, taxes and everything. So I'm still well on the budget. Um, mainly so because remember, I wanted to squeeze a keyboard in if I had to, if I had to go up a little more, but this keyboard is, is I'm out on, on this model of keyboard. So do I hold it and wait for Logitech or Belkin or, you know, to see what they have or see if this one be works another few months. And if right. this one or doesn't my work, one. then just get a Amazon case for the iPad for now and a, use a Bluetooth keyboard with it. Right. Which is how I ended up with all of these junk keyboards just laying around anyway. Right. So I have a ton of, of Amazon keyboards that are just laying around useless and I can just, you know, manage with that in a case for the next few months until, you know, one of our, our go-to manufacturers come out with a good one. So we'll see. Um, I, I am on the fence now about this terabyte because I do want the 16 gigabytes of, of, uh, of Ram. And again, I'm going to hold on to this for, you know, uh, a, a few months, uh, a few years rather. Um, so, yeah, but that's what I went with. The one that you were uh, specking out, what, what were you going with? What were you leaning towards? I know one terabyte. Yeah. So I'm on the fence about, um, so I'm not on the fence about Apple Care like you are because just my lifestyle is going to be a little more. If I've yeah. got it out of the campground and I dump it off the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. the only yeah. part I'm on the fence on really would be whether I went cellular or okay. not. So uh, what I spec'd out was space gray or space black, I guess. Terabyte, mm -hmm. standard glass, Wi-Fi plus cellular. I may not do that because I think I'm going to have enough cellular in my life because that's most likely going to be my internet service. Right. Um, no engraving with the Apple Pencil Pro with the keyboard, which I'm on the fence about. So mm -hmm. all in spec'd out with Apple Care was 2746. Okay. Wow. So, but I mean, the big <laughs> thing is if you take out the the keyboard, right? I mean, it's now all of a sudden you're down to under twenty four hundred dollars. So, and I had Which... adjusted my budget north of three when I thought I was going to be buying, and now of course I'm not. So yeah, yeah. So without the keyboard, though, I I, I didn't realize. Yeah, you had the keyboard in there. So without the keyboard, twenty four does sound more reasonable than yeah. uh yeah. My problem uh, so, is I, so I space just got black. Rid I just got rid of all my Bluetooth keyboards, I think. I don't think they're – maybe there's one in a box in my garage at the moment, but I'm not sure I have a Bluetooth keyboard left. So. Right, right. Uh, but I could just use um, Sidecar, right, and uh, continuity display or whatever it is, right, and just use my MacBook keyboard on it too. So Yeah. Yeah, I could I – can... I can see that, but I mean, would you really need them both at the same time, right? You no. take and the iPad was, for the portability, port portability, yeah. and the battery life. So the the point was of me, if I decided to get one, was to do all of my personal stuff and most of my consulting stuff on the iPad. And really, this MacBook is only used for what we're doing right now, and then the right. editing that I have to do. Um, so then yeah this this machine should get used a lot less so yeah but i'm not buying anything right now so my debate is going to be when i sell my home um not if uh my wife will be okay with me spending seven thousand dollars on apple stuff because even selling my house that's i don't think that's going to be a good idea so then i'm right. going to be down to am i going to buy the vision pro or am i going to buy this ipad spec'd out the way yeah. I want, way I want it, and honestly, at this point, for me, even if I had the money, unless I had the money to buy both to spare, I would be waiting until WWDC because I want to yeah. see what they announce at WWDC. Because for me, the Vision Pro seems like an ideal thing for me because I, I'm not taking a monitor. I sold my big 27 inch monitor in the yard mm -hmm. sale. Um, along with my webcam that went along with it. So I sold both of those. Um, so I've still got my little 4K portable one, but it's the 15 right. inch or whatever it is. 
So, you know, the Vision Pro would really be good for some of that kind of stuff. So I need another 30 days before I'm ready to decide which one I'm going to buy when when my budget yeah. comes in. So Well, and I think, too, like you said, you're not going to make a decision until after WWDC. Um, I think with that 15 day trial, yeah. you'll really be able to, uh, you know, put it through its paces and see if it's something that you can really get value out of. So yeah. I know I'll be able to get the value out of the iPad. That's not a concern. Yeah. The bigger question is, do I buy the air first and see if I can do all the things with the air that I would like to do? Yeah. And then if not return it and go up to the, the pro. Well, will right. the air drive an external monitor? I don't think so. I don't think so because of the... Yeah, I'm not going to drive an external monitor, though, right? Unless it's well, maybe that portable. 4K. Maybe. Yeah, I can see you using that just for dual monitors and a keyboard. I mean, we're talking little, you know what I mean, on a, on a bench somewhere or whatever, but it does have a USB-C connector, so it should, in theory, be able to drive that. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see when we when we do a deeper dive into the specs and and people start getting review units and stuff. Well, let's see. So I've got on this comparison, I've got the iPad Pro, blah, 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 liquid. Blah, blah, blah. Well, it has center stage. Well, not center. I'm sorry. Mm. That was, I was thinking of. Uh, <laughs> the stage manager. Stage manager. Um, display. Which has, it has the stage manager. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not saying here. Yeah, um, I think it will. I think people are going to test would, that out first. I would think so. It's got USB-C and a smart connector, so I would think yeah. it would be able to power it. I think so. And again, like I said, this Air is basically the current iPad model now, right? It's basically the M2 iPad Pro um, with a few a few upgrades. So I would imagine it could at least drive that one screen and maybe hook an external speaker yeah. or a webcam and stuff too, but we'll see. And Apple's, Apple's website says with the right cable, you can connect your air to an external display. So, okay. So real quick, I know we both have to go uh, wrap this thing up, but what's your biggest disappointment? Uh, well, a couple of them, however many you want to, you want to add. I think the keyboard, I'll go with the keyboard as my disappointment. And then also mm -hmm. the no iPad OS, even though they started to talk about it and then, boring colors yeah yeah so i i think same disappointments for me i think my main one was that it wasn't available today and i, I really thought it was um i'm excited to see too because you know how every now and then people start getting stuff a day early so maybe people will start getting i did a store pickup if i do the one terabyte i'll do the the express shipping but you know every now and then people start getting them a day or so early uh, yeah. maybe that'll be the case but um, disappointing well, I mean, in the for colors. Me, for me, I can do in-store pickup or shipping on the one terabyte. And I even checked without cellular to mm -hmm. make sure because sometimes the cellular ones don't sell as fast. But it doesn't seem like these have pushed out at all for in-store. And I don't have a big Apple store here. We, I do not have right. a, all of mine are um, mall size stores. So I would think you're going to be able to do in-store pickup if you want to. Okay. Um, yeah, disappointed on the colors, of course, disappointed in the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. I think my, the biggest disappointment was, uh, I'm with you, uh, but we kind of, we kind of knew it was just wishful, wishful thinking that they were going to announce some new features, but we know that they were going to hold most of that to WWDC. Yeah. So, but I'm with you a little disappointment that they didn't mention at least, you know, some hints that, that some big things are coming, but we know they're coming. But yeah, that was all I had today. No, uh, no uh, time machine episode. No way back episode that we we like to do for our uh, our deep dive. And next week we're going to be talking more about iPad, right? We'll be going some more in depth on some specs and some things like that. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, I mean there will be more stuff out there. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, embargoes are lifted at some point mm -hmm. this week. So we could start getting some MKBHD, Brandon Butch, maybe. Right. Who knows? Right. Some CNET, who else might stuff have like that. Some. Yeah. So yeah. next week we'll plan on doing that. And then the week after, Jason yep. should be able to do hands on. 
yeah, yeah, we'll have some hands on, maybe some shorts and stuff around that, and then we'll get back to our our time machine episodes where we back, go back in and... my day. <laughs> I always love those. They, they they seem to be uh uh picking up some some steam too. A lot of people comment directly. I get a lot of direct comments too, Greg. I think you do too. Um, I know you said people have been commenting on the videos and stuff, but yeah, people like to message me directly and tell me their, their yeah. opinions. Please, please add them to the comment section. Let's let's widen this conversation out. Let's get people involved and and yeah, jump in those comment sections. Let's talk about it there. All right, folks. Well, thanks for listening to this uh, hot take episode, even though it was it was a pretty long one this week. But uh, again, we look forward to this day. So uh, yep. thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.